Hey everybody, thanks for clicking on this video. My name is David Pendleton, and today I'm gonna give you a rookie walkthrough for the Sakura Hills Nine Hole Cup Tournament. I'm recording this outside, so hopefully the background noise and the wind uh, isn't too, too bad. You know, hopefully you guys will be able to hear me pretty well. But I'm gonna keep this video pretty short today, you know, as when you play a nine hole cup, you only get a couple days to qualify and then you're playing the finals. So I actually got off to a good start on this account today. And so I decided to go ahead and qualify it in my very first playthrough of this tournament. So you see we did okay, we did a minus 13, but you'll see uh, we shit the bed on a hole number eight. So I'm gonna give you uh, some advice on a couple things to avoid in this tournament because I would say that the game gives you a lot of rough bumps on this course. And unless you're a really good uh, player with pulling your rings and are pretty technical, you might want to avoid uh, some of these rough bumps because you can see hole number eight got me. But you know, this would have been something in a normal tournament to where I would have made that mistake and then tomorrow I would have tried the hole again and probably purposely forfeited and then played another practice round um, on the third day, which we normally get. Um, you know, that way I can kind of figure out, you know, where I go wrong and, and do better. But we don't get that opportunity in a nine hole cup. We just have to, we just have to go for it, uh, which is what I like. I prefer that. I can't wait till the game changes and they take away the same wind and they take away, you know, a lot of these other things. I can't wait till we just get to attack the course and we all have different wins. And I'm gonna still be able to help you guys out. So, you know, don't worry about that. But let's hop into this real quick. Two things, if you find this helpful, please subscribe and please hit the like button for me. All right, so let's go ahead and just hop right into each hole. And I didn't really have to save replays today as I just got to play it in one straight shot. So, six, five, four, three, two, one, okay. So we're gonna take a look at hole number one really quick. And, you know, again, like I said, I'm just testing shots out. But, you know, here is how I ended up playing this hole. So we're gonna use a navigator ball. And we're gonna play the drive at 0% elevation. So, you know, if you're taking notes, you know, hole number one, navigator ball, 0% elevation. And on shot number two, I did decide to play at 10% uh, because it looked like it was a little bit downhill. But let's go ahead and just watch the drive. Now there's a couple ways you can drive this. You can go ahead and just drive it from right here. So to the left hand side of that bunker and that's gonna be very safe. Um, but I wanted to get more on the right hand side of the fairway to approach the pin. So I decided to drive between the sand and the rough I still think overall, you know, in rookie, this is a, a very safe approach. Uh, with using a navigator, you get a wind resistance two ball, which is why you seem to use a lot of navigators over a quasar. And, you know, I do feel that if you just hit a perfect shot here, you're gonna have no fear of going into the rough or the sand. And you can see that I settle on half a ball of curl. So again, I'm playing between the sand, between the rough, uh, no elevation. Basically full top spin, full right spin, half a ball of curl, and you see the drive is very safe. Now, if you rewind that, okay, and you look at the angle towards the pin, uh, actually, just let me show you, because I, I saved it, because I get a lot of people ask me, um, you know, about elevation, and there's the drive again. So full top, full right, no, no elevation, but, um, some people ask me like, well, how do you come up with elevation and what do you look for when you do that? So I'll show you what I do in a tournament because you get really good camera angles. So like when this ball comes down here, now let's look at this. Okay, look where the flag is. So you can clearly see that the flag is downhill. So we are not shooting on a flat surface. Um, which means that whenever we hit the golf ball, just like in real life, if I were to hit a golf ball downhill, um, the wind, it's going to be in the wind, it's going to be in the air longer, okay? So the wind is going to push the ball around more. 
So in this game, um, they've accounted for the same thing. So technically, we have to adjust for that. So on this next shot, I decided to just start at 10%. So here is shot number two. As you can see, I'm using a thorn and I'm just kind of checking where my distance of my club is. And I get that question a lot too. How do you know if you're in minimum distance, mid or max? Well, what you do very quickly is you stretch your club, okay? So the game starts me right here. So as you'll see, what I do, not my fault. The game starts me around here. So I go up there and you see where it's at the thorn right now? Well, if I push up, it goes to the Goliath. So if I was, if, if the flag was way up there, I would be at max distance of my club, but it's not, it's way back here. And as you can see, over here, I haven't even switched to my wedge yet. So around this area is minimum distance. Well, we're really somewhere in between. So I decided to play this one at mid distance of my thorn. So we're going mid distance at 10% elevation because the shot is downhill. And you can see here, I put three bars of backspin. And if we rewind it just for a second, um, three bars of backspin and look at my ball guideline, I'm putting it almost in the cup. And this is how I always do the first day of qualification. I try to put things right into the cup and just see where the ball lands. You know, thank goodness we hit a perfect ball. Okay, so we hit the flag and we bounce into the hole. So, um, and we get the eagle. So that's a really great start. We pick up the eagle on a par four, but in the finals, um, I'm not gonna put the ball guideline directly in the hole like I did there. I'm gonna back it up about half of a green square because I feel that I got pretty lucky that I hit the pin and I bounced back into the hole. I could have hit the pin and bounce back onto the green, all right? So I need to back up my landing target just a little bit and let the ball roll into the cup instead of bounce into the cup. So, you know, hopefully that makes sense to you, everybody. And um, that's hole number one, which we feel good about. Uh, hole number two, you know, I decided to use a backbone uh, just for the accuracy purposes and a navigator ball. And it's getting super windy out here. But I was just looking for a landing spot. So, you know, I put three bars of backspin and one bar of right spin. And I put the blue ring here by the sand line. And we play this on 20% elevation. That's what I started at. Cause look how downhill it is. If you look at this camera angle, you are significantly downhill. And I'll show you that here again, since I get a lot of questions on this. But um, you can see just a little bit too much backspin and we come pretty close to the hole for the first day of qualifying. But take a look at the elevation on this shot here. And this, shoot, come on, David, what I do. Um, and this is why I went with 20%. So let's back up to the tee box here. Okay, so like look how far downhill that is. You can just tell by the camera angle, you know, you're significantly downhill. Uh, that's why I started at 20% on this hole. And I'm just gonna keep it at 20% because you can see that when we took our shot here, um, we came in on a pretty good line to the cup. So I know that the 20% elevation, adjusting my rings for that is good. Uh, I just need to take off a little bit of backspin and see what happens. At this point, you know, uh, I only have the final round left, and I only have one rookie account, so it's going to be luck if I hit the hole in one. Well, I guess the luck, a little bit of skill, but um, that's where we're at on this particular hole. Okay, so let's head into hole number three. So hole number three is our first par five, and if you're riding down the elevations, uh, I played both shots at 10%. Now, I decided to use a kingmaker here, and I'll go through why I decided to use a kingmaker here, even though I have tailwind. So I think this hole, um, you know, back in the day when I used to play tour three, uh, this hole was a good opportunity for an albatross. Um, 
and before I knew what I was doing, I used to use like king makers and stuff on this. You know, now you know that I, I would never do that um, again on on it's like tour three, but here we're getting 2.4 mile per hour uh, tailwind with a kingmaker. So if I switch to a Titan, okay, I would get more distance on my drive because a Titan is only wind resistance too. Um, if I switch to a Quasar, I would even get more distance on my drive probably. Well, it'll probably be about the same. But anyways, so just compare a Titan and a, and a, and a um, kingmaker. Titan, I would get more distance, but I wanted the wind resistance on the second shot uh, to get us a better chance at an albatross. That's why I'm going with a Kingmaker. And some people ask me, what, how do I go about what ball I choose? And that's how I think about it before I play the hole. Okay, I see the wind. Um, I know that even if I do a wind resistance three ball, I'm, gonna, I'm still gonna make that bottom fairway. And it doesn't really matter how far up I get on the fairway. I just need to get to the bottom fairway. Um, that way I can either use my Goliath or my Sniper for the albatross shot but here we go 10 percent elevation on the drive you know you can see here that i'm putting my yellow ring uh, right up on the rough line and i do that every time for a landmark purpose uh, that way every single shot i take from each round right now is the exact same and i went with you know some overpower and a little bit of right curl and I even hit a great shot, but you know, you're not gonna have any fear of not getting to this fairway. As you can see, I had a ton of room left. And even if you have lower level extra miles, you're gonna be okay to get down here. It's just about getting down here at the end of the day. And then, you know, here I am, I'm, I'm checking my distance of my club again. And I play this one 10% elevation as well. As you can see, I'm pretty much bouncing into the cup. So let's take a look at my landing spot because this is pretty important. So you see my landing spot? Eh, I need to back up this a little bit more. God. See, this is why I suck at technology. That's why uh, donations to a guy like me help, because this stuff takes me forever, as you can see. Okay, so there's a good spot on my landing position. You can see bounce, bounce, and then the tail goes into the cup. Hit a perfect ball. You know, that's always important. And that's a really good roll into the cup for an albatross. You know, so we sink that one. Oh, that's really good stuff right there. And we can only hope we get off to the same type of start uh, in the finals. Okay, so hole number four. Uh, I played this one 10% as well. And I use the backbone. And I'm just kind of moving the camera angle around to find a particular landmark. So like I use the green squares on par threes to get a good scope of what I need to change when I miss a shot. So I'm playing this one 10% elevation as well. I'm playing at max distance, but you know, what sucks here is I hit a great ball. So I can't really, I don't really know you know what to adjust next time other than you know i need maybe a click a top spin but we're still going to pick up a easy easy birdie um, on this hole and look where my opponent's at somehow he ended up in the rough um you know so i don't know if that's going to be i don't think this is going to be a trouble hole for a lot of people but uh, you can see it was for him all right so let me go back in here and go to hole number five Hole number five is going to be a par four. And according to my notes here, I played this one 10% elevation. I don't think I have the replay save, so nine, eight, seven, six. Okay, yeah, hole five. Hole five, shot number one. All right, watch. 
But it's a pretty straightforward drive. Uh, we're using a navigator ball here because this is a short par four. You don't really need any distance. I put my orange ring on the rough line and then I settle for four top and then one bar of right spin. I was gonna go max top, which is four and a half bars with an extra mile seven. Now, if you have an extra mile eight, it's gonna be six bars. So be very careful uh, with your top spin because you don't wanna roll into the top of the rough there. And I think even if you did that, you have no problem getting to the green and saving your birdie. But I do feel this is a great chance for an eagle so you can see I hit a perfect ball with four bars of top spin. And there's actually plenty of room left to go up on this fairway. So I will change this to four and a half top. So I'm gonna go max top with my extra mile. And I'll even add like a click of overpower to it to get as much distance as I can here. And then shot number two, shot number two, Where is shot number two at? What the hell? Shot one, right? That's what we just did. Watch. Okay. Oh man, okay, well that's super frustrating. So, uh, apparently golf class didn't save any of the replays from the rest of this hole, so and I think I stopped saving my replays at this point. Because I was like, oh, I don't need to save replays because I'm just going to play it straight through after I hit that albatross. Yeah. Well, anyways, here's the drive again. So let's take a look where we end up. All right. Now, take a look right here. Now look at the flag pin. You see how we're playing uphill. So on shot number two, I want you guys to play at minus 10%. So instead of adding elevation... We're going to be subtracting elevation because this shot is uphill, meaning once we hit the golf ball, uh, the wind is not going to be much of a factor. So we need to account for that in the game. So minus 10% elevation on shot number two. And there is a really, really, really good rough bump, okay, uh, to hit the eagle on. I hit a perfect shot and I rolled around the cup. Uh, I don't know why the freaking replay is not there, but we do know that Golf Clash is having some issues with replays. So let's hope the rest of this damn uh, video is not like that. But minus 10% elevation, and there's a really good rough bump there, everybody. And there's a lot of rough bumps on this course, uh, which can get you in trouble if you're not a good rough bump player. So be, be mindful of that. On that last hole, you don't have to go for the rough bump. You can lay up on the green, um, but you're probably not going to eagle it if you lay up. It'd be an automatic birdie, though. Maybe it's here now. Come on. Nope. Just two shots. All right. All right. Hole number six. That sucks, man. Hole number six. I'm going to play elevation 10% uh, on both shots. You can go about this two ways. Um, I was thinking to go on the right-hand side here because I think it gets us a better angle to the hole. And just so you know, I will be changing it to playing on the right-hand side in the finals. Now, if you don't want to risk it, I don't blame you. Use a katana. And you can see here with the extra mile seven, I'm going full top spin and two bars of right spin, not full right spin, two bars of right spin yellow ring at the rough line here by the trees 10 percent elevation i use a little bit of overpower just to see Perfect how much distance i would get now all of a sudden we have sound on the game but there's plenty of room there everybody so if you have an extra mile eight uh, you could probably easily go a uh, full top spin and be okay Okay, good. So my replay is here for shot number two. Now, see, I think if we took the drive on the right-hand side, we would get a better angle to the pin than what I have here. But you can see I'm at max distance of my Goliath because I almost switched to a sniper. 
I use two bars of left spin and one bar of top spin and I put my ball guideline through the pin and I chose 10% elevation and I am pulling at max distance of my Goliath. Let's think about that for a second. So the spin on the top spin is fine. We can stay with one bar top spin, but we use two bars of left side spin and I still miss to the right. So what I would normally do if I had another day to qualify, and I'm just telling you this to make you a better player on your own. Um, so let's say that I forfeit this hole on purpose like I would normally do on the first day of qualifying so that I would get another chance on day two. I would play the same top spin but what I would do instead is I would go max left spin. So I would go to three bars of left spin instead of two bars of left spin, put the ball guideline through the hole and then see what happens. Okay. So let's just pretend that I'm able to do that. And I still miss to the right, but I barely miss to the right. So then what I would do on day three of qualifying is I would do something called offsetting. So instead of putting my ball guideline directly through the middle of the hole, I would move it uh, to the left of the hole. Maybe still inside the cup, but to the left-hand side uh, to even that out. But anyways, that's a really, really good opportunity um, right there to pick up an extra drop. And um, that's how I'm playing it. i probably go to the right-hand side, though, uh, in the finals because I think it's going to give me a better angle to the pin. But I don't think you can go wrong either way. All right, so now we're going to head into hole number seven. Hole number seven is another par three. And um, so you can play it two ways. You can get your backbone and just play it right there off that little fairway where the game gives you. But you can see I'm going aggressive here. I'm using a navigator ball and I'm using the Goliath uh, so that I can try this rough bump. And like I said, the game gives you a lot of rough bumps. So you just have to know your own skill set and if you're willing to gamble or not. Tournaments, I like to gamble. But I'm playing this one 10% elevation at max distance of my Goliath. How about that crap? Um, obviously, that's a very, very good line uh, for a hole-in-one opportunity. And we'll watch it again real quick. 10% elevation. Uh, I think I do think you need a Goliath, though, to pull off this rough bump. Because right there where the game starts you at, you can do that with you know a backbone and get a very safe uh, birdie. But right here, you know, full right spin. And I went with one bar of top spin. So, you know, this is where you got to kind of figure out. Uh, it looks like I actually went with one and a half bars of top spin. So, you know, we might need to change that to one bar of top spin and hope the ball comes in at the same speed. But you'll see, I mean, this is a very, very good opportunity for a hole in one. And in this particular tournament, I don't think you're going to see a lot of opponents get hole-in-ones. All right, hole number eight. So this is the one that I, that I hit a freaking par on, you know. So I'm going to show you what not to do. That's just damn sure. You can't get a par and win. Uh, but we're on hole number eight, you know, another par four. Uh, I chose to go 10% elevation on the drive. And then shot number two, you know, it looked like it was uphill. So I went minus 10%. But so 10% added elevation to the drive here. 
Now you can see we can just use another navigator ball. I like to use a lot of navigators, okay? Um, because it gives you wind resistance too. And it's a very, you know, it's an easy ball to get with gyms and free balls, so. You know, that shot's uphill. Look at the camera angle. You're uphill a little bit. So I went minus 10%. Now, this is where rough bumps get tricky, all right? So this is where I personally need to improve my game. So, you know, I get asked sometimes on Facebook Messenger, like, like what's the next phase of me getting better? Uh, it's this right here. So sometimes when you go for these rough bumps, especially by the sand, your, your target rings get distorted. And you'll see what I mean here. So look how... Look how much bigger the, the orange ring and the yellow ring get when I go to take this shot and pull my rings. It throws off my ring count. So you see as you dip into the sand how much wider the rings get, uh, which is what caused me to misadjust here. So I went for the rough bump. I thought I had that lined up really good. Big shot. Yeah. And unfortunately, I did not save this shot. So, what do I suggest you do? Well, I suggest you don't go in the sand like I did. Um, I still suggest you play the rough bump, okay? Maybe try to find a better spot on the rough to land than I did. Again, only one day to, to practice this today. So, um, Or, you know, if you're off to a really good start, um, just take the safe birdie. You kind of got to gauge it in a nine-hole cup. If you're crushing it, um, there's no there's no point to really gamble um, on that shot right there. But you know that might have just been a bad shot my, by me. There might be a really a better rough bump there to play. You know, at a different area of the rough. But that's where I started at. Um, but there you go. I, I do feel feel like that's a good eagle opportunity though. Okay, hole number nine, uh, again, because, you know, I used to play Tour 3, like, nonstop. I actually wrote a path to build a very strong uh, accounts. So, like, if you take a look at this account's stats, 3,100 games played. I forfeit most shootouts. I only, I only play a shootout if I need to fill a chess spot. 80% winning percentage, 2,000 trophies. You know, I play Tour 8 and Tour 9 with this account. Um, you see a lot of banners here. I actually wrote a path on how to do this. And if you're interested in it, um, you know, you can hit me up on Facebook or whatever. I sell it for five bucks. Uh, and the only reason that I do that is because I spent a shitload of time researching the algorithms of the game um, and everything. So it's a fail safe uh, way to build a very, 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 very strong account. But let's go back into this last replay. But what you need to know about hole number nine is a couple things. Is I think opponents are going to struggle with it and get a birdie. Just like my opponent did here, even though she outdrove me. Um, but I want to go for the eagle. And I want to be on the green uh, to putt the eagle. Which is a little bit tough to do on this hole. So I chose to pull out a berserker. Now, if you don't have a good sniper, you will need a big dog. But either way, we can get to the green in two. So let's take a look at what I did here. Again, only an extra mile seven. So I only get four and a half bars of top spin. And I know quite a few people that watch me are using the extra mile eight. You know, but we don't worry about that. We just look for landing spots. And I chose 10% elevation. And I pushed back up to max to get my distance back. But... I don't think I should have used any right curl, and you'll see why. Because I even fire off a perfect ball at full overpower. And I think that right curl put me into the rough, and I easily roll out. But I would have liked to get more distance on the drive. But uh, this is why I chose to use a berserker on this hole, because I knew something like that was possible. Now, you'll see here the nice part about a Berserker is I'm able to get uh, to the green easily, easily 
in two shots. Now, if you don't have a good sniper, you know, and you don't have a berserker, then you're definitely going to want to use a titan ball. And the reason we're using a titan ball is because we're getting tailwind on the second shot. So we want to keep as much distance as possible. But use a big dog, use a titan, preferably a berserker. And you can see here, I don't have to use Perfect any shot. overpower at all. So no overpower on the second shot. And I am easily on the green, which is a major advantage in this tournament, picking up the eagle on this hole. Nice uh, that person was emoji dropping me like crazy uh, on my drive. So I kind of gave it back to him a little bit there. But anyways, so there it is, everybody. I appreciate you watching. I think it's a pretty good path. So, you know, we'll recap it. We got an extra drop on hole number one. Hole number two, I don't think we're going to get the hole in one on. Hole three, Albatross, you know, I don't know if that's duplicatable or not. But it was a really good line, so I do like it. Hole four or five, picked up a couple birdies. Hole six, hole seven, and then hole eight is the one uh, that we screwed up. So, you know, we left a minus 14 out there today which I think is definitely good enough to win this thing in rookie. I think a minus 13 is definitely going to put you in the hunt, you know, for a top five, at worst a top 10. So please subscribe. Please hit the like button. And if you're a generous person and this, you know, you find this helpful, you can help support my channel and donate. That would be awesome. Uh, really would be. And you can find out how to do so in the comment section. Thank you for watching.